This beautiful drawing from the collections of the National Maritime Museum in London is a ship plan of HMS Warrior, launched on the 29th of December 1860. Warrior was the largest and most powerful warship in the world and the first armour-plated, iron-hulled, seagoing ship in history. Warship design was then in a situation of flux, teetering on the edge of a generation of innovation that would reshape and redefine naval warfare as never before. Steam would replace sail for propulsion, iron and then steel would replace wood for construction, exploding shells would replace solid iron shot for armament, and they would be fired from rifled, breech-loading guns that could fire further than could ever have been imagined. The Warrior was both a steamship and a sailing ship. So first, notice her propeller. The bronze propeller had two blades, was seven metres in diameter and weighed over 25 tonnes. The propeller shaft itself was 30 metres long and weighed over 50 tonnes. Her powerful engines, producing 1,250 horsepower, could turn this propeller at over 50 revolutions per minute, and under steam she could reach 14.3 knots. It was the largest hoisting propeller ever made, meaning that the propeller could be raised or hoisted up into the hull when the ship was under sail to reduce drag in the water from the blades, though it was so heavy that a team of 600 men was needed to raise it. The two funnels are statements of Warrior's huge steam motive power. The funnels were designed to be lifted and lowered on a winding mechanism, depending on whether the ship was under steam or sail. When under steam, great care had to be taken that sparks coming out of the funnels did not set the sails alight. The funnels provided the exhaust to her ten boilers, each served by four coal-fired furnaces well below the waterline. Warrior was immensely strong. The keel, frames, beams and cladding were all made of wrought iron. Iron bulkheads divided the ship into sealable compartments and also provided additional structural strength. All of her crucial engine equipment was housed in an impregnable armoured box called the Citadel. Made from four and a half inch thick wrought iron plates, bolted to 18 inches of teak and then mounted on the iron plating of the hull itself, behind which were the frames and timber lining, this was a total thickness of some two feet. This Citadel was a radically new concept in warship design. Her guns were broadside mounted in the traditional way of the wooden warship, the gun ports shown clearly in the plan. Warrior's main battery consisted of 26 smoothbore muzzle-loading guns, a traditional design, but they were enormous. Each gun fired 68-pounder balls or shells with a maximum range of three miles, and the strength of her hull meant that there were more of them than had ever been housed before on a ship. In addition, she had the very latest in gun design, ten rifled breech-loading guns, which could fire conical shot five miles. In effect, Warrior had more firepower than two standard wooden ships of the line. In spite of all of this radical design innovation, some aspects of the ship still reflected the practices of the preceding century and were rather quaint, not least the stern gallery. These windows on the stern quarter shown here on the plan are in fact fake. They are just painted timber. But she did have three glass windows on the stern that could be fitted with one inch thick iron shutters. And of course, there is her carved figurehead, a stylized Greco-Roman warrior holding a shield and a sword. She was also rigged like a traditional warship, with an immense 48,400 square feet of canvas, which could propel her up to 13 knots under sail alone. Her sails were critical, as there were not enough coaling stations around the world for her to operate under steam power alone. And best of all, the wind 
was free. Another new feature of the warrior was her rifle tower. This was a heavily armoured cylinder with tiny slit windows, originally designed so that marines could offer a defence in the event of the ship being boarded, protecting them from small arms fire. This was later modified with the addition of voice pipes and an experimental hydraulic steering wheel to allow for navigation in battle, turning it into what became known as a conning tower, a standard feature of warship design until the end of World War II. Remarkably, Warrior still survives. She was decommissioned from active service in 1882, but survived being scrapped. She can now be visited in all of her glory at the National Museum of the Royal Navy in Portsmouth. A most remarkable warship, a technological innovation in the business of war, but which never fired a single shot in anger. And the two were linked. Warrior was so superior to any other warship at the time of its construction that its supremacy never had to be challenged in battle. She was the ultimate naval deterrent.